Okay, we're at the site of Edfu, south of Luxor, and it has to be around 110 degrees Fahrenheit out today in October of 2021. I've only been to this location once, and that was nine years ago, so this will be an almost new experience for me. This is a late Ptolemaic construction, so from around 300 BC to very early into the AD. And we're simply going to see what we find. The outer walls here are the later construction. So possibly in Roman times, these were put here as a defense to control access into and out of the structure. So once again, we see a massive threshold made out of granite. That's what we've seen at many other sites, such as Dendera. And so it shows you that there was some sort of megalithic presence here prior to the dynastic time period. And here's another giant slab of granite as well. There's a depiction of Horus. They both would have been wearing the double crown. And another depiction of Horus here. Remember that means because we are, we've actually um, been able to transmute our polarity and are using both sides of the, both hemispheres of the brain. But this whole temple is dedicated to Horus Behadet. And that means he is the exalted one at Un, the highest state of consciousness. And if you look up, we've seen this image before, the winged disc, and it's always in the center path of the temple. So two statues of Horus, relatively rough in terms of work, so likely from the dynastic time frame. This is, this is basically when you're sent That's the whole reason for the temple. Now, as we walk through, the things that the priest did after the priest of our moon is begin to separate out the temples. So the general public could only be in these outer. Yeah. 
So sandstone floor, sandstone columns, the source of sandstone is quite close. The temple that has the building text. It's the temple that people talk about, many people like Graham Hancock, about um, Atlantis. So you see how massive these columns are. Our geologist Susan just uh, made the observation that it is quite possible that the dynastic people found these giant temples and then they carved their inscriptions into them, but that they didn't actually do the construction, that these are an inheritance of a much older civilization that had megalithic construction capability. So that is something which is a new idea for us to think about. And one is dedicated to Karas, and one is dedicated to Hathor, right? Well, these arcs or arcs, in my research, and I've compared notes with uh, Kathleen McGowan, who is an expert on the Ark of the Covenant, and she went through all the way. If you're familiar, there are two arcs in the Covenant. There's one that Moses is called to, and there's one that Solomon is We're also approaching a major megalithic element. You can see that massive um, stone thing in the background, likely Aswan granite, massive in size, and polished very smoothly. So that could be a pre-dynastic artifact. So again, just look at the sheer size of these massive, supposedly Ptolemaic columns. Supposedly, this place talks about ancient locations such as Atlantis, ancient catastrophes, but I can't interpret hieroglyphics at all. So if you want to look that up, then I recommend you do that. Look up Edfu Temple, Atlantis, and that might lead you to some interesting texts. Greetings. Can you go upstairs? Thank you.
So we're not going up to the top, just showing different layers, different rooms. Thank you. Good morning. So this is the location of the Holy of Holies. So that is why we see a pre-dynastic uh, large stonework there in the center. It's typical of even dynastic sites that a much older piece would be brought in, usually of granite, in order to bring the ancient structure into the relatively newer structure. And natural lighting. Okay, so we're going back outside of the main temple. We have Patricia Awian Lehman with us, who is going to do some interpretation of what are called, for example, the Atlantean texts or the Atlantean story. So this is where the so-called building texts are located. This is also where Stephen points out the thing with the devil as well, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So here is Horace right here in victory. I think this is the hippo is set, so he's riding set. Um, the Hathors and their tambourines. And then all along here, this little animal at the bottom of the spear. Okay, there is Horace, and he's got the spear in set, right, as the hippo. He's killing the beast, but of course, this is a false story of the priest. You cannot kill the beast. You transmute your polarity within. Oh, the dragon. Yeah. They say it's a hippo. Looks a little like a dragon. That looks kind of dragonish. This one right here? Yeah. Little dragon. Definitely a little bit more like a hippo. Yeah, forest. Yeah. It's, yeah. Stifling. That's the image everybody uses for Zep Tepe. But, uh, Where, where's that? The one right here with the sail. If you look up Zep Tepe, that's what you usually see on one. What, that? Yeah. Oh. But again, you can see there's set the set underneath the bark. Uh, yeah. It's all a story about the battle between Horace and Set. The story is um, the son is getting old and weak, and Horace is going to help save him. There's all these netters or whatever that want to destroy the son. And so Horace turns into the hawk and he rises above up to the sun and he looks down and he's able to see everything going on and save the sun. So it's the restoration of the sun. So the old entire sun, which I relate to the solar flares and everything that may happen when we initiate the next catastrophic event. And then Horace 
is our savior and the planet's balance is restored. And right up here, you see top at the top. All of that is the building text. At the end? Yeah, that whole panel up there going so down. The top, just the top panel though? I believe it could be all of that. Okay. Like I said, nobody's been able to translate it for me. And the Atlantean story? Um, Atlantis. Well, that's all what I was talking about at the beginning. A lot of people equate that when the waters recede, the mound emerges and the gods walk the earth. And they consider that the story of Atlantis. Oh, okay. And they consider that the place, this is the place in Egypt where Atlantis is spoken about in that context. But again, you have to remember gods here meant netters, meant forces of nature. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, okay. So, any significance with the pictures? Did they look like they were lion faces? Yes, that? these were tefnuts. They would have had um, can I, um, channels with water coming out from the ceiling. Remember, I showed you the false doors at Bendera, <clears throat> and they had holes at the bottom, and the sacred water from the heavens would come out and fall in the basins, and then you have your sacred water. Ah. Oh. He's getting to me, so I'm going to do it. So, of course, people are going to ask about the defacement of the faces. Most probably that was done after the dynastic um, Egyptian time. Some blame the Christians for doing that. Some blame Islam. If we could go back in time, we could find out. But since we can't, we simply don't know. But this is a rarely visited location. And so we're fortunate to be here. Okay, now we're inside and I've been instructed by our geologist Susan to go up onto the roof. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. So this is similar to the Temple of Hathor Dendera spiral staircase going up, but only going this far. So no actual access to the roof itself. like a middle level And then we'll just go back out again.